Last night I went out and got some fiddler crabs and uh, today I'm going to take them down to the south end of Topsail Island. I've heard that there's some uh, sheep's head around the um, around the docks and the seawall down there so I'm going to fish around some of those areas and see how it all goes. I think I got maybe maybe 25 or so um, fiddler crabs so when I run out of those I might go troll the uh, around the inlet. I'm going to be getting out there about 30 minutes after low tide, so I'll be fishing the incoming tide today, which will be really nice. It should be high tide around noon, and I uh, really hope it's going to be a good day. See how it goes. tide is definitely pretty low there's a lot of sandbars out um, right now so I'm kind of looking forward to hitting some of those channels and um, definitely gonna get up next to the docks now that it's summertime um, I'm gonna have a lot more videos coming out so I'm you know I'm gonna try to uh, at least keep some content coming out weekly depending on <clears throat> you know my, my personal schedule and all that stuff but uh, you know hopefully I'll get some uh, some good fishing videos Hopefully I can get back on the reds here again soon. Uh, the redfish have not been good for me lately. Flounder haven't been bad. Um, I'm really looking forward to getting some sheep's head though. I've never actually caught a sheep's head. So, you know, I've typically been flounder, redfish, and trout. Um, I've stayed away from structure because I didn't have the Hobie before, but now that I have the Hobie, you know, I feel like I, I feel a lot more confident about getting up on those structures and fishing them a little bit. So. Who knows, maybe my first sheep's head will be today. Hopefully. So I think this seawall right here is going to be pretty good. So another little issue that I have, and this can be pretty easily fixed, is um, I, need the, I need the rod tube extenders on the back. Because I'm having a lot of trouble kind of lining up my uh, lining up my rods and keeping them on there. I just need somewhere sort of quick to lay my rod down. Oh wow, that was a big fish! I don't know what that was. I think there's a huge school of mullet underneath of me. This is a lot sharper. That was a big sheep's head. You can see the high tide line here. So I'm thinking high tide is when they're really gonna start coming in. Right now I'm just kind of testing some things. I'm still using that Carolina rig with that same uh, size one hook that I had yesterday.
That's a uh, that's a sea bass. A little black bass. Man, if you could be just a little bit bigger, it'd be a good little fish. These guys are super pretty little fish. I love that that teal color in them. Nope, 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 nope. Go on, go free. Are you going to be bait or am I going to let you go? My target species for today is sheep's head. You get to go free. Keep that. There we go. Oh no, you're black drum. Oh. Thought it was sheep's head. I saw him. <laughs> I saw him go right up to it. That was pretty cool, man. Okay. So what's the minimum for black drum? I think he's definitely a keeper. But I'm gonna check anyway. So 14 inches. Oh yeah, he's right at it. Make sure your nose is lined up. Yeah, my friend, you're right there. Should I keep you or throw you back? What do you think? You gonna be dinner tonight? I'm gonna keep him. That was kind of cool. Watching him go right up to the bait like that and grab it. So that's what I was seeing was a uh, black drum, not sheep's head. Okay, so we're gonna bleed this little guy out. There's some waves. Definitely getting pretty hot. But the current has almost completely stopped. This is when I would expect to start really getting bites. Oh, 
Oh shoot, that was a good tug too. Big pinfish. Oh, did me the, save me the trouble. It's hurt. Sea bass. That's a pretty little fish, man. Be some bigger sea bass down there, hopefully. Look at all those little glass minnows down there. Tons of them. So I got maybe maybe 10 or so fiddlers left. Hopefully they last. I don't mind catching the small sea bass. They're pretty, they're pretty neat little fish, so they're not really a problem. Guys, yeah, cutting kind of this This current, though, is unbelievable in this area it's so fast it's crazy i'm thinking there might be a couple sheep hanging out in these rocks down here just waiting for something to bite come on now Either a take home size black sea bass, which is unlikely, another black drum, which would be nice, and a sheep's head, which would be awesome.
Well, I was not recording. I just caught a uh, gag grouper. That stinks. Dang. Well, I'm down to my last fiddler crab. So that little gag didn't get featured in the video. Maybe I can catch another one. Who knows? We'll see if there's another one here. I can't believe I missed that little gag grouper on here. That was a cool little catch. I'm pretty sure that was it. Yeah. And there we have it. Let's see about getting some cut bait now. All right, so what I'm gonna use for cut bait this stuff okay but yeah um, this is kind of a last resort for me I use this stuff to catch things like penfish and croaker so that I can cut them up for bait um, seeing as that I am out fresh out of uh, fiddler crabs and uh, well this is pretty much all that I have left right now I need to catch some penfish. If I end up catching black sea bass or <laughs> if I catch a sheep's head on this shit, um, I don't. I don't even know. I don't even know. I will. Uh, I, I will. You know. I don't know. Give one subscriber a uh, a free trip to tag along with me. Uh, you just have to pay um, for everything, except for uh, following me around. So, I don't charge people to follow me around, but you know, we'll see. If I get a sheep's head with this pink bait. Let me get up next to this structure over here. Man, I almost had something. That was quick. Was I wrong? Man, she's falling ass. Okay, so I have uh, rigged up my smaller pole. I'm gonna go with this pink bait again. Probably just gonna be black sea bass. Hoping for pinfish. I do not want to kill black sea bass for bait. They are uh, they're abundant, yes, but they do have a size minimum, and uh, I respect that. So. I got myself caught up in something here. So, uh, this is one of those situations where the rudder or the uh, pedal drive doesn't do you much good. Okay, so let's go ahead and. up in front of this dock right here. I think this one should be fairly good. I want to pull in some little little sea bass, you know, have some fun with them. Um, this isn't going to be anything crazy. It would be really neat if I caught a sheep's head on this thing, but... Come on, buddy. I didn't even make it down to the bottom before he grabbed it. Back to that common problem with the comp ray.
curious. Let's see what I should be looking for in a 13 inch sea bass. You are six inches long. So we've got half half pints running around here. <laughs> There's got to be some big ones down there. They can't all be these tiny little babies. Right? <laughs> I find it funny that it's easier for me to catch sea bass using this pink stuff than it was for me using the uh, fiddler crabs. Oh, you got you, you messed up my pink stuff, man. What the heck? What the heck, little dude? Thanks, baby. Oh, jeez. Maybe one of them will end up being a 13 inch, who knows. I just like that I got some something aggressive to, to bend the rod a little. There's bound to be a big one down there. Can you get off? Nope. Okay. There you go. So, this is crossing a fairly choppy channel. I just got a break, trying to get out of the wind. to this jetty thing at the end here. This wind is really picking up. show you guys now that I'm back in this is one of the uh, things that I use to clean my my gear with you just fill this up with some tap water before you leave the house and that way when you leave you know the salt water you can just hurry up and get all that salt and everything off of it as fast as you can you can mix some salt hex into it if you want I don't um, I, pray, I spray salt hex on it when I get home Saltex being that same liquid that they use to clean out boat engines that have been out on salt water. So I just dilute it with a little bit of water, put it in a spray bottle, and spray everything off. But 
but that's the only way to keep your gear from being replaced constantly because especially when you're fishing like the south end of the beach here you will uh you will be losing your stuff because that's that corrosion will tear it up <laughs> We're all wrapped up. Uh, we got one black drum, you know, that was worth keeping. So he's gonna be uh, he's gonna be dinner probably tonight. Um, he did have some parasites on him, but I don't think any of them were like down on his skin. It looks like they were just clingers that were kind of hanging on to him. But uh, I'll get him cleaned up, make sure he's good to go. But uh, for right now. I'm just going to go ahead and drive back home and uh, enjoy the air conditioning because uh, I'm hot and I just realized that I did not put on my Bow and Stern tie downs so I'll be right back. Alright, so I got my Bow and Stern tie downs and those are important. It's extra protection to keep your kayak from flying forward and uh, it can also mess up your liability if you're in an accident kayak gets messed up. You didn't tie down the bow and stern. Yeah. So let's see. I'm going to go ahead and pass through here. Man, this place is busy today. We may need to stop by somewhere and get a drink. 